Let, Let us, us mark, mark this, this day, day with remembrance. Hey YouTube, got a wonderful video for you right now. Watch this till the very end. You are going to love this. Leave a comment and have a wonderful weekend. Our new policy begins with strictly enforcing U.S. law. Strictly enforcing U.S. law. America, in the face of our common dangers, in this winter of our hardship, Let us brave once more the icy currents and endure what storms may come. Let it be said by our children's children that when we were tested, we refused to let this journey end. there by Big Bear.
Let's mark this day with remembrance of who we are and how far we have traveled. Let it be told to the future world that in the depth of winter, when nothing but hope and virtue could survive, that the city and the country, alarmed at one common danger, came forth to meet it. America, in the face of our common dangers, in this winter of our hardship, let us remember these timeless words. With hope and virtue, let us brave once more the icy currents and endure what storms may come. Let it be said by our children's children that when we were tested, we refused to let this journey end. Well, we don't get up to the lake because we're retired. And nine o'clock, I heard a knock on the door. It was a chap from next door. He was out watering his tomato plants and he said, Do you want the good news or the bad news? I said, the good news is you got a swimming pool? Yeah, and he came out and got a hole in the ground, you know. Oh, my goodness. It's hard to explain. Yeah, a hole in the backyard. <laughs> And as we've, been out, as we've been out here watching it all morning with our neighbours, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think, when's it going to stop? Um, what it is is old workings, old mine workings. We've identified the fact that there's a shaft put in here many, many years ago and um, we've been in contact with the mines department. They're sending a team up here. Um, summer and there can't actually be snow somewhere in the United States. Can there? Yes, there can. Mauna Kea Observatory, that's over in Hawaii, of course, and as if it's not crazy enough that we have snow somewhere in the United States, how about the fact that...
Mary Becky, because the weather wars never seem to end in this country for weeks, even months. People in this country have been really just praying for one thing, and that is for the monsoons to arrive, because after two years of drought, their farmland has been desecrated. There's been this heat wave that's been sweeping across the country, killing hundreds of people. And now it's the monsoons that are killing people. As you mentioned, 90 people killed just in a matter of 24 hours, mainly in this one state of Bihar. Most of the people who died were farmers because this is a time uh, as the monsoons arrive when farmers are out planting. Uh, yeah. Don't think you'll be disappointed with this. Not a spot on lens, not a spider. There's no legs with this. And they're on four cameras at the same time. And now we can see that it stayed in there for one hour and then it bounces back. Again, it is in a orbit around Nibiru that is, looks appear to be coming and going. So it's going above and below the horizon as this thing is coming at us and away from us as it approaches us and then retreats as it goes around Nemesis. Next, I'm going to show you Please pay attention to the time here. This is the second at the same time. No, well, this is over Italy. And now we've got Switzerland at the same time. We've got the same object. And let me do the time lapse on this one. Yes. Look how big it's getting. You can start to make out the plasma tail. And the camera setting here looks like a 400 ISO, not quite visible with the naked eye. Look at that. That thing's just getting bigger. And you can almost make out the redness of this thing. Oh my gosh. I've never seen this thing so big. It's getting close. Wow. We continue running the time lapse here, and then it disappears. And it reappears again. Again, it's the shadow. It's still facing the northwest. The actual planet is in the north, southeast. What you see here, everybody, is a thing called sun calc. And what it does, what this program does, is it shows you where the sunrise and the sunset should be relative to your position. So an example here, this is where I am right now, where this red dot is. This is where I'm located. And basically it's saying that the sunset should happen at this, or the sunrise should happen on the yellow line, and the sunset, sunset should happen on this red line, okay? Now, here is the important thing that I want to bring up right away this morning. The North Star, first of all, was off by 3 to 5 degrees, as confirmed by about 30 subscribers over the weekend. So anybody that knows where the North Star should be based on fixed points uh, on the ground, like me, um, my story was I, I, I go out and I've been checking the North Star's position for three years. It has not changed for three years, okay? It stays in the same place winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's always in the same place, okay? The way you can find the North Star is you take the two ends of the Big Dipper and draw a line. So our position, fixed position relative to the North Star right now is off by three to five degrees to the west, Wayne. Or to the east. To the east. Yes. In my observation, and I have a solid one, and then I've gotten confirmation from several different people. So what does this mean? Why is Steve so freaked out about the North Star? The reason Steve is freaked out about the North Star is it's the one fixed point that we all can, everybody in the Earth, can validate the North Star being in a position if they have two fixed points on the Earth, okay? I have now enough information to tell you from astrophysicists, astronomers, and people that have given us feedback at WSO, they all tell me that we're correct, Wayne, that the North Star has moved three to five degrees to the east. The implications of this, Steve, is, um, well, it's very disturbing. Yes. The second point I wanted to bring up, and that's what the sun kelp thing is for, is to say that you see that red, that red line, Wayne, that points off at about 
rough. This is this is a rough forty-five or just off forty-five degree angle here. See that? I see it, Steve. From sunrise to sunset. So it is normal for us to see the sun setting in the northwest, and it is it's normal for us to see it rising in the northeast. First of all, that's not unusual for this time of year, you guys. Okay. What is unusual, though, and I, if you can, can you see my little hand? Yes. When I looked at the sunset for the last two nights, the sunset has been here, where my hand is. Hmm. About 22 degrees, Wayne. <laughs> Which, by the way, Steve, as you know, when you called me on Saturday, and I immediately went in and checked uh, my compasses, um, I registered and recorded the same anomaly and here in the denver area we were off by about oh 22 to 27 degrees to the northwest and it didn't change in fact uh steve i posted on my youtube channel um a recording of where i actually filmed the needle of the compass actually oscillating back and forth and, and that was sad. yeah and by the way and i won't i won't bore everybody with the, with the data you know because it is pretty boring data but that has been confirmed by several as well that did after we talked on saturday i reached out to a couple of the other subscribers and they all confirmed that they were also having the same magnetic anomaly i actually know a pilot friend who told us yesterday that he's a private pilot that he can no longer rely on his compass. Um, I said, well, <laughs> how do you get from point A to point B? He says that they, they use um, a gyro uh, software that is more directly linked to GPS as opposed to trying to follow magnetic north. Yeah, let me, having been an ex-avionics guy, I can give you a little insight into that. There are th there's a thing called a gyroscopic internal navigation system that uh, yeah so those 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 systems don't even require GPS by the way um, Wayne well thank you yeah I'm a novice I you know I I ride in them I don't drive them right no no that's okay I, I it's a very strange thing that I'm an expert in it because the Air Force made me one <laughs> good. So we used to navigate with a primary our primary navigation before GPS came online was a thing called PACAN. The, the civilian world has a similar thing, and basically those are fixed points on the Earth that transmit signals that basically are waypoints, okay, across the country. So you can know, navigate um, as a commercial military, or as a military pilot, you can navigate by TACAN, you can navigate by com uh, compass, you can navigate with uh, yes, and then internal navigate, and then the last thing is in called internal navigation system, which is a GP is a gyroscopic uh, device that uses the Earth itself as its waypoint, Excellent. but doesn't rely on celestial um, observations or anything like that. It just knows where you are relative to fixed. Hi, so this is Solar System Scope, and we can see this is the actual time and planet where we're at right now with our universe. I'd like to show you a couple things where we're at. And where these objects actually are, as I said before, that so if you click on this little Earth, click on here, and then we can see the different views. And most of these were over Italy and Germany. And we can see when we click on the scope here. When I said that we were looking at the shadows to the northwest, that would have been right about here. And at this time, so. Everything I'm doing is all happened within 30 minutes. It is 6.40 Pacific time. So I'll leave a link in the description because it's happening now. And so the southeast is where this whole thing's going as it settles down, I think. Just about in here somewhere. It's probably, again, this is our horizon. This is our Earth's ecliptic plane. Through the plasma field, which is going to stop the Earth, pole shift, the rich people are going to hide in their cities, which a lot of Christians believe that this is going to be a six seal judgment, and I am one of them. And how can I stay calm? Because the world is not 
falling apart. Everything is falling into place. Just the way God told you it was. So I wanted to show you one other planetary alignment that I think is uh, important. And, you know, I'm just looking at the elections, predictive programming, Neptune, the signs. Uh, I look at Bible prophecies where I get these alignments. And one alignment that I find very interesting is the sun, moon, earth, Neptune in the Aquarius on August 31st. I've heard this date before, this alignment with Neptune, because it's a water planet. Like in the days of Noah, I think they had an, an ancient flood. When, two, when the water planet is in alignment with Aquarius, this is like a time clock. People were confirmed dead and 13 others remain missing after heavy rain caused flash floods and landslides in East China's Jiangxi province, South China's Hunan, Guizhou, Guangdong provinces, and Guangxi autonomous region. According to the local government, as of 6 p.m. on Wednesday, floods had left three people dead in Jiangxi. So far, 21,000 people in the province have been relocated, and another 10,000 people are in dire need of assistance. In Hunan, continuous rain resulted in swollen rivers, landslides, and mud rock flows. The provincial flood control and drought relief headquarters said on Wednesday that three people died in Hengshan County. Meanwhile, four others were reported missing. About 530 houses collapsed and nearly 12,000 people were evacuated. In Guangxi, one person was killed when a house collapsed in torrential rain. Two were swept away by floods while another was buried by a landslide. The rain and ensuing disasters also destroyed over 700 houses, ruined more than 20,000 hectares of crops and four... begin in Ethiopia where the death toll from a landslide at a rubbish dump in the capital has risen to more than 60 and there are fears it may still go up. Rescue officials are still searching for dozens of bodies trapped under the kosher landfill. CGTN's Girum Chala has this update from Addis Ababa. Dozens of makeshift homes are buried under the mountain of garbage behind me. People have been dumping their rubbish here for decades. It's believed around 150 people were here when the landslide took place on Saturday night. Dozens of people are buried under tons of waste, as you can see behind me uh, there. People have been making a living by picking through the rubbish dump for useful items. Some had even made permanent homes for themselves around here. It's believed children are among the dead. Search and rescue operations continue here, but rescue workers face a tough task. Bulldozers have to carefully remove the rubbish uh, over there. The heavy machinery could cause further slides as well. For now, they operate in the hope of finding survivors. NATO is touching down in southwest Florida. This happened overnight, and this was the scene in Punta Gorda, where an EF-1 tornado touched down on Aspen Road East. The storm going through one family's yard, destroying their barn, sending chunks of metal flying, even cutting their horses loose. A lot of memories of this barn had ever since I was 13. Now it's gone. Went out with him, we and the other horses were loose, running around, and it's very dark. Well, the storm also flipping the family's truck over on its head. All the family's animals are expected to be okay, though one duck was lost. The family says they're working to clean up the mess and rebuild.
China's National Observatory has raised its orange alert for frozen roads in the country's western Tibet autonomous region. A snowstorm and frigid temperatures have led to road and highway closures. A blizzard swept the Shikaze, Ali, and Shanan areas on Friday and Saturday. Snow drifts were 30 to 50 centimeters deep in the urban areas of several counties in Shikaze. Well, the power supply in downtown Jilong was also temporarily cut down. Local authorities are clearing the roads, so they also distributed food and livestock feed in advance to help villagers graze for the snowstorm. Maurice Christine, good evening. It is low tide here, but high water on the Great South Bay, where streets flooded and folks were forced to stay inside. Cars caught in salt water, a big problem. The rainy, wintry mix melted, and even several hours after noon's high tide here on Suffolk's south shore, streets in low-lying areas were impassable. All eyes are on that massive storm. Take a live look at Wrigley Field in Chicago. The snow starting to come down right now. The roads messy there this morning. They're bracing for up to half a foot of snow today. Highway havoc in the Midwest, a late winter storm slamming millions from Iowa to Minnesota. Awful. I didn't expect it to get this bad. It's intense. So crazy. Plummeting temperatures, freezing freeways, sending cars sliding off the road and into each other. The treacherous conditions causing this 24-car pileup outside of Minneapolis. Wind and waves from Lake Ontario along with freezing temperatures engulf this New York house in ice. Surprisingly, this isn't out of the ordinary. Delays in the Twin Cities as airlines have scrambled to de-ice planes is stuck on the tarmac. A frigid blast blowing across the region overnight, dumping close to 10 inches of snow from the Dakotas to Iowa. Another 24 inches expected in some areas by Wednesday. But merciless sub-freezing temperatures, disastrous near Detroit. 65,000 people in the area still without power. And officials now say carbon monoxide poisoning from generators have left two people dead. In this northern Detroit home, a mother and her two young children hospitalized. This morning, across the Northeast, 60 million residents are bracing for the winter wallop as it barrels. Now to Peru and those tragic mudslides, the death toll rising there following intense rains that have left thousands homeless, but some heroic rescues giving many hope. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. In the fast moving muddy water and piles of dangerous debris, a woman almost washed away. As she tries to free herself, her hair seemingly gets stuck before she finally pulls herself to safety. One of many lives narrowly spared from Peru's raging flooding and mudslides that officials say have killed more than 70 people so far this year and left more than 70,000 people homeless. Tonight, as intense downpours overwhelm towns and send rivers pouring over their banks, desperate rescues are underway. Near the normally dry capital city of Lima, dozens of people crowd onto rooftops above washed out streets. Zip lines being used to bring families and pets over fast rising water. Others are forming human chains to get to dry ground. Tonight, half of the country is declared a state of emergency. Officials say this is the worst flooding in Peru in nearly two decades, with much more rain still expected.
started taking everything up. My trash cans were flying everywhere. My tent was flying everywhere. I was kind of hanging on it, like almost like a monkey in a sense, trying to hold everything down. There is one video taken by Louisiana resident Danny Garceau on April the 1st. The video has garnered a great deal of attention. I would say that this is one of the most convincing captures of the star system that I have analyzed over the years. The brown dwarf in a very rare appearance as it orbits our sun in retrograde fashion. And there was also a series of images taken on March 16th and 17th, which are equally incredible, showing the presence of a celestial body. These images are posted on our Facebook page and can be viewed close up. And be sure to follow our page for daily updates on the Planet X Nibiru system leave a comment or a message, and as a source to share your images and videos. Fourth, Tuesday, 9 o'clock Mountain Time, 2017. What we're looking at is the Gulf of Mexico Rainbow Loop is what they call this. And you can still see a persistent disturbance down here in the Florida Panhandle. It's slowly moved across Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Alabama, and it's been hitting Florida and Georgia the past couple of days. And it was so intense in Georgia yesterday that they've gone ahead and declared ahead of tomorrow's storms because it's predicted to cause a lot of damage and destruction in southwestern Georgia tomorrow that they've declared a state of emergency right here in uh, Albany, or actually south of Albany, in Doherty County. A full-blown state of emergency in Doherty County ahead of the severe weather, and it hasn't even happened yet. And it's because the weather that they got yesterday was so bad, so strong, so intense, that they're not taking any chances. Here's what the uh, local news had to say about it right here. And you can see the maps of what they're predicting for tomorrow. They are in a uh, moderate to high tornado uh, path right through here. And Albany's right in the middle of it. Check it out. Here's what they've got to say. State of emergency has been declared for Doherty County ahead of tomorrow's storm. The National Weather Service shows Doherty County could possibly see strong, long track tornadoes with destructive wind gusts as high as 70 miles per hour. Now, these weather events could happen throughout the day tomorrow. And we want to tell you more on the details on what exactly a disaster declaration means. Number one, the county emergency operations plans will be activated. Number two, the emergency operations ordinances that Doherty County commissioners adopted will be operative. It's getting just off the charts. Everywhere you look around the globe, there's some sort of um, wild weather going on. If it's not giant hail, it's strong winds, straight line winds, dust storms, tornadoes, floods, landslides, mudslides. It just goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop. It only seems to intensify. So there's already a state of emergency in, a pl in, uh, in place in Doherty County, which is south of Albany, Georgia, right here for tomorrow. And the storms haven't even hit yet, but they're brewing. And they know it. And based off of what it did yesterday, they're not taking any chances. Another for sign that this is in play. Record snow, blizzards, Newfoundland, eastern Canada, 
getting over 120 centimeters of snow. And for those of you in the U.S., 2.5 centimeters equals one inch. A couple images for you here. Snow up to the rooftops of homes. Now in Canada, when it's reported in the news as an unbelievable amount of snow, and this is in Gander, which also had record snows two years ago. Seems to be a trend in that area. Here's the actual depth of some of the snow on top of the cars. And all of you hearing about the melting sea ice, oh, it's going to melt in and we'll use all the Northwest Passage, and it's definitely disappearing, the sea ice, or so you've been told. Atlantic Ferry, stuck in sea ice off Cape Breton. This off the IceAgeNow.info newsfeed. Nova Scotia Ferry, stuck. They're not really sure when they can get it out. They're sending an icebreaker right now to try to escort it out of this slush pack ice. Image here for you of the escort ship trying to break it free right now and cut a channel through there. Cape Breton here on the map for you, Far Eastern Maritimes. A bit north of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Satellite image for you here. If truly all the sea ice was melting, you think further south latitudes would be the first place that it would disappear, not in the Arctic Circle, which they keep claiming. How can there be so much sea ice this far south if all the ice is disappearing in the north? How can there still be ice further south? This is just simple, commonsensical stuff. guys got three tornadoes today and some beautiful lightning and destroyed another window with hail but more important news we lost three storm chasers today uh, Kelly Williamson Randy the storm wranglers were in an accident with uh, another storm chaser named Corbin from Arizona I believe I didn't know him but Kelly and I were friends and uh, used to hang out and underneath the storms and talk about everything except the storms. I remember being in New Mexico with him last year and we were looking for arrowheads and didn't find any, but uh, we talked about getting barbecue and beer all the times, but we kept missing each other. Um, just last two days ago in Oklahoma, he and I got to hang out for a good 20, 30 minutes before getting all the funnel clouds. And uh, he, was, uh, he was a hard worker and he was a good storm chaser. He was just a good old boy, down to earth guy, and that's what made the Storm Wranglers TV show so good. And uh, and uh, I'll miss him. And my deepest condolences go out to the families of all of them. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so I don't know what else to say, but rest in peace, guys.